I'm Dana Hahn Klein here with Kulop Vilaisak for Origin Story. Did you have concerns about sharing such a personal story so publicly? Yeah, I had a lot of concerns. <laughs> uh, well, what were some of them? Well, you know, just uh, being uh, being brought up, as I'm sure you can relate, in an Asian American household. Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about feelings. There are no feelings. Yeah, there's oh, just you're right. There are none. There's, there's just rugs to sweep. Right, what, what is there to talk about yeah. if there are no feelings? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we don't talk about. Uh, you know, my parents are. are war survivors from Laos, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, when I got older, on the other side of 30, I could have the language to say, like, oh, I think they're depressed, and I think uh, they may have um, unresolved trauma, and oh, maybe that's PTSD that I was, uh, my, that they had, and that I was raised with. And you go, oh, okay, so, okay, so now a lot of things make sense. Right? Um, so yeah, like, uh, it was hard for me to, you know, uh, as how do I, how do I navigate that? And it's scary to air my family's dirty laundry um, in such a public way. But um, the reason to do a documentary like this is to really go there and be raw, because otherwise what's the point? You know, it's just a family slideshow otherwise. <laughs> this is that good? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Having a huge fight. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, so speaking of that, like, what was the editing process for you like, right? Because really, you're in the moment and then now you have to watch it back. Yeah, we're not meant to yeah. have uh, two camera coverage of our memories. <laughs> yeah. And you see the things that you miss in person and, you, you know, it's, it's, it was, this entire project was like um, going through the fire. Over and over again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this whole process, I was like, you shouldn't do this. You should stop doing this. Wouldn't it be better to eat and sleep? I still do that, but like, just stop what I was doing at the moment. Um, but I felt compelled to do it and finish it and see it through. And it was for me, you know, like for me to, first of all, see it, see my life in that way. And for me to, finish it. And and I feel great pride that I started something and I finished it. Were there moments where you're like, I don't want to show this, like this is too much even for me? Because there's, there's one scene in particular where I was like, this is just raw rage and emotion and I've been there and I get it and I'm glad this is on film because I'm glad scene. I'm not the only one. There's scene, many. Scene but. with my mom in no, the... No, when you just upside down table and I was like yeah that's me that's Man, all of us. I, yeah I just uh, sh yeah you're speaking of a moment where I just kind of have a um, a grown woman hissy fit <laughs> and, and, and that moment was just like I remember going saying like this is hard for me and then somebody in the crew going yeah I can tell and all of a sudden like it's like my eyes went black and I just went oh, oh. <laughs> like just yeah. and I was, and I truly was, I had a lapse, and then after I stopped crying, I was like, oh no, this is gonna end up in the film. Because <laughs> what my DP did in that moment when I was so frustrated and I, I had, again, a temper tantrum, he uh, walked away from the camera but left it rolling. And I thank him for that. Yeah. And I'm also mad. <laughs> <laughs> But just by myself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I just there. lift yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I hope over. I hulk oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of the interview is just me apologizing yeah. profusely. <laughs> I can't believe Gail Simone made you a, like a comic character. Like I know that's me too. To do with, like, that's no, so but it amazing. sort of does. Yeah, because my character that Gail Simone created is a bit of a hothead, and so it, it makes sense. It's true, it's, but that's just a super like you're my hero for being a superhero. Uh, <laughs> like I, I, you know, it's a big deal. There's not a lot of Asian Asian American superheroes. I mean, can we put them all in one hand? Mm -hmm. I mean, Janet Van Dyne in one, the Wasp, in like yeah. one iteration, you know? She's not, the Wasp isn't Asian in the movies now, you know what no, I mean? She's just very so far from, she is a Wasp probably, but not that Not true. Asian Wasp, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> got it, now I got it, now I got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. Um, well, no, but it is interesting, right? Because I think it kind of ties into that, like, we don't see 
Asian family stories and we don't yeah. see Asian superheroes and we don't see that sort of thing. So you did, did that like kind of weigh on you when you were telling the story like as a consideration? Well, yeah, because I, you know, well, there's a couple of thoughts I have. It's like, okay, well, um, it's so awesome. Sometimes in Hollywood, you know, there isn't like, I want a more range of diversity. So yes, we have fresh off the boat, but that's not every Asian family. And then that leads me to speak about um, an every Asian story. And so that leads me to speak about like being Lao American, we don't fall under that model minority myth, right? The, the country's poor and when we come to America, we as a population tend to stay along that poverty line. The education stats aren't great either. And so we get lumped and lost in this sort of model, model minority. And I was like, that's not my reality. That's not what I see. So it's important to have like representation in all ways. And I think it's like our, our entertainment should reflect our surroundings and how you and I walk around. Um, and I think if it doesn't, it makes, it's this sort of gaseous feeling of invisibility. Has there ever been a time that you felt represented on screen at all, aside from obviously your own piece? I, I do pretty well, I've done pretty well. I, I've gotten to be in projects that I'm really proud of. The first thing people usually remember me from is like from 10 years ago, which was The Office. And as like slightly controversial as maybe being marked by <laughs> Adams or uh, uh, Michael Scott yeah, in the, as the yeah. Benny Hanna waitress, there was like there was a it was an interesting, fun role. And so I get to be in Parks and Rec, and I've gotten to do um, parts. But but you know it wasn't enough. As a creative person, I want to do more. I want to express myself further. And like any good immigrant kid or kid of immigrants, you're like, well, I got to do it myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, no one's doing it. All right, let's do uh, it. Must we use it? Get dirty. Um, did you grow up with other? Because I know you lived partially with Ed. Um, you know, white family for yes. a portion of your youth, but were there other Asian families around aside from your own, or was it just? Yeah, there were there were other Asian families. Uh, th there's a Lao community in Minnesota because of the church system, mm -hmm. uh, the same uh, path of having sponsorship families, um, and you know, certainly, but yet, yeah, of course, a minority, and then we're a minority of a minority. Right. But I grew up in Egan, which is the suburb of St. Paul, and that's you know, that's you know, Minnesota is white not just because of the snow. People. New state, new state <laughs> slogan. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, have you found a marked difference in reactions between white and Canadian audiences to the film? Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, there, there, there's, there's absolutely a Venn, a Venn sort of diagram mm -hmm. where everything meets. First family stuff is, that resonates. Uh, you know, part of doing the the documentary for me was to also. Uh, bring some light into the um, America America's involvement in Laos and the conflict and, and the bombs that they dropped on on uh, the country that still remain. I mean, we're talking millions and millions of bombs um, that the U.S. is responsible for. That's just cut and dry. Yeah. Um, and so it was important to have that part, and that is so much a part of my history. And so they're having those elements. Um, has I think been very informative um, to my my white my white friends and audiences <laughs> <laughs> and white family. <laughs> um, uh, I mean I think uh, you know and with Asian a lot of my the people who've seen it who who are Asian it's just it's a lot of like wow we don't talk about the stuff and the fact that you I mean. The questions that I'm asking are tough. To to, to point out, my mom was like, uh, you know, what happened with us? I never felt like you liked me. Is such a like revolutionary question, and it was for me too. Um, I, it was, but it was like after years of um, not talking, and after years of um, uh, like aggressively, um, uh, you know just aggressively not talking well with each other. We, I, had, I finally had gotten the tools to be able to just like ask, and I got it on camera, which is a blessing. Has she seen the film? No. Are you going to show her the film? Yes. I tried. I tried like two weeks ago, but I went home to Minnesota to show her and the dad I grew up with separately because um, they're separated, divorced, <laughs> very divorced, and two people couldn't be more divorced, really. Um, but unfortunately, uh, uh, 
my uncle passed away and she had to go to Canada for a funeral. Uh, but that's going to be a big deal. Have your sisters seen it? Yes, multiple times. And they were here, uh, they were here in Camp Fest. Oh. They've seen it like four times now. You don't have to answer this question necessarily, but I will. Uh, okay. Uh, are you are you in touch with your the extended family from your biological father's side? Like, have they seen the film? Um, like your your half sisters, I guess. Uh, my half sister Amy was at Camp Fest yesterday, last night. Um, the three younger ones that he's raising have not seen it, uh, and I don't have contact uh, with them other than social media. So you were working on this and then also working on your shows and like all your various other things. Like how do you balance that? How do you disconnect? Can you disconnect or is this just kind of like weighing on your mind until it's out there in the world? Well, I wouldn't say that I worked on them simultaneously. Like I worked on the documentary for, <coughs> excuse me, about a year. Oh boy, geez, uh, about a year and a half. And then um, Bajillion Dollar Properties came along and then I put the documentary on hold for two for two years while I did four seasons, but it was in the back of my mind. And I had a lot, you know, I did an Indi Indiegogo mm -hmm. campaign and, uh, um, th you know, the responsibility of having received funding from the public at that, I, it hung over me. So I was still thinking about it, but I didn't actually work on it till Bajillion was done. Would you go back to Laos? I Laos? So. Yeah. I would definitely. Okay. I don't know if I can show it in Laos though, because it's, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's Probably a you not. call, but... <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I have self-preservation. I mean, I'm, I'm, we're critical of the government that is still in power, and so, um, yeah, I don't think it's like I'll be back with it, with the film, but I'll just go back yeah. for me. So that, that experience didn't kind of... The post-experience didn't sour at all? No, no. If anything, I feel more connected to uh, the country and to my culture. What's something that you learned from the filmmaking process of this film that you applied to the other project you were working on? When I decided to do this documentary, I had never done a documentary before. I'd never done a movie before. And it's just something that I was compelled to do. And, and I had to learn a lot. I learned, it was film school. Uh, I surrounded myself um, with people who had experience. I um, am lucky to have a support uh, a system and a community whom I can ask a lot of questions for and who have showed up for me in advice and actually giving me resources. Um, so I learned everything uh, in this process and it gave me confidence uh, to do Bajillion. It's like, well, you know, uh, can I be a showrunner? Can I create? Can I decide to direct a few episodes? Uh, yeah, I can because I went to Laos to meet my father. <laughs> I can do it. Okay, I can, I th I'll figure it out. And that's also just like, no matter what, I'll figure it out. What was the most logistically challenging scene to film? Logistically Logi challenging? Because emotionally, I'm sure that could be the whole movie. But. And it's so tied. But logistically, well, I mean, you know, yeah, we, we, had to, we had to arrange to have like a, a crew on the ground in Laos and to have a fixer uh, to help because the, I don't know how to get permits from the government. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, there are. Yeah, there well, like filmmaking, are. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it's not necessarily a country that has seen a ton of film industry. Yes, yes. But it's like, yeah, we're roaming around with cameras. Like, if somebody had a problem with us, well, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? And my parents, my dad especially, was really worried about me. Um, so having a fixer, you know, and uh, just uh, and like loads of equipment. My producer was like, we're not getting on the boat. I'm like, we have to get on the boat. It's going to be great. She's like, if the, if the cameras go in the water, it's a problem. I go, I know. <laughs> I know. I know it will be. <laughs> but we have to do it. What inspires you? Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, uh, I am privileged to um, have uh, ha the family that I choose, my friends, um, they are they are so inspiring to me. Um, uh, they, I'm lucky to have friends whom I truly believe have elevated me as a person and has elevated my conscious consciousness basically. Um, so I, you know, I'm inspired by my girlfriends. I'm inspired by my husband Scott Ackerman. Um, I'm inspired by my community. Uh, I came through. Uh, I came through the Upright Systems Brigade Theater, and we work on each other's projects. We support each other's projects. Uh, so it, it's 
I'm so fortunate to be uh, amongst that caliber of people. And, and these people are have we've kind of come up with each other and found success, but they're all genuinely amazing, interesting people. So I, I definitely get inspired by them. On the flip side, what frustrates you? I'd like more representation in um, in front of and behind uh, the camera in uh, entertainment in Hollywood, uh, across the board really, in media, um, which is why I started uh, a group called Los Angeles in LA, which is um, you know a community that came from nowhere and from nothing. Uh, I've, this will be my 20th year in LA in the summer, and the first 10 years maybe I met two, two, two loud people. And now I started my first Facebook group, and now we have almost 100. And we're coming together, and we're supporting one another, and doing potlucks, but then volunteering. And I really, it's really important to me that we that we amplify that Lao American hustle. Um, so that's just one part of it. But as I mentioned before, I think it's just so important to have a greater range of diversity. It's like we shouldn't just go, okay, we have one one black person in a movie. We're covered. <laughs> like, we no. Did it. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna pat you on your back. Like, come on, like we can do more. And as a female showrunner, it was important to me to have a balance uh, in all aspects of of the production. And it's a better set. I have no problem saying that. It's a better set. And so I would advise people to put women in charge, because it's better. <laughs> you literally beat me to my favorite and next question, so I'm going to tweak it a little bit for you. Okay, all right, all right. Um, so how can women, and women of color in particular, um, let's say somebody who's kind of more on the ground and just starting okay. out, like maybe somebody who is starting their writing career, or starting their okay. comedy career, or starting, what's one tangible thing you think people can do to support each other and support endeavors by other people in the communities that you know are being underrepresented? Well, first of all, come together, right? Uh, so if you're, let's say you're new to, I'll say LA, because that's where I'm from. So that's, well, it's been a lot of people you know, yeah. in media do okay. flock to. Find a community, one, find a community. Is it, uh, for me, Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, comedy. Um, if you're a straight actor, some sort of uh, acting class, start taking classes, start meeting people. Now you have to start collaborating. Start going, hey, I think you're funny. I like what you do. Let's write a sketch together. Okay, I'm a normal actor. Okay, let's uh, let's do a scene together. Um, I want to be behind the scenes. Okay, let's make shorts together. Start creating, and just start producing. Start producing, so that you can and fail. Oh, fail so badly. Fail harder and get up again and keep going. Keep going. You gotta start getting good. You gotta put in those like those hours, right? Um, that's step one, and you support each other as their successes and their failures, and you don't get you try your best not to get jealous because that's a whole that's it's it's a false thought that there's only one pie and that there's only so many slices, right? And you get to work. So if you're a writer, write. If you're an actor, act. Don't wait. Do not wait. You need to start, you can't, you need to be in position in this business so that when an opportunity arises, you're ready. The worst thing is to have an opportunity and not be ready. And if that is the case, you fake it until you make it and you ask questions and you take it seriously. But, but this, is, this is a tough biz and you need support. So be supportive. <laughs> Interview over. That was the best interview yeah. I've ever all day. <laughs> 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 I'll start yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Who knew no, this was gonna yeah, happen? That's, that's absolutely true. It's very inspiring, especially from someone who did that, went out and did the thing. So, yeah. Um, how do you relax? Oh, I relax so good. <laughs> Y'all, I'm, I'm, my birthday was on Friday. Know that I'm a Taurus. Know that I love textures and softness, and I am not afraid of a two-hour massage. Nice. Uh, but, and that person has come to my house through the Sue app. <laughs> Highly <sponsored>, recommend. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love them to sponsor. It saves so much money. <laughs> Just <catch> Spas, <laughs> guys. I, I do it all. Like, I need to play hard, relax hard. Uh, how do you define success now, and has that definition changed from when you were younger? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, I, yes, that it has changed. 
Um, I define success with, um, I guess, as a as a, a person at my age, the ripe age of thirty eight, is it's a more well rounded kind of answer. Before, when I was just an actor, it was like, oh well, I'm not I'm not a success unless I uh, I get a pilot, and that pilot is the new Friends, um, and I never got that pilot. <laughs> And so I was, in my mind, never a success. And then you're like, wait, hold on, you know. Um, I measured success maybe on other pe people's success. Um, and now, and the shift happened maybe, I don't know, five years ago, where it's like, no, like, you're a creative person. Like, what, what do you like? And what do you want to do? What do you want to see? And so, like, that's the initial step. It's like, well, how, how, what steps are you going to get? Are, are you going to take to get you to those places? And so I feel like success now is um, finding a way that um, I guess art and commerce can come together um, and, and in that that I'm completely true to who I am because I fought so hard to figure out what that meant and this documentary is absolutely part of that. A, yeah, 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 hugely, hugely. What's some of the best advice you've been given? This is from a writing teacher, his name's Bruce Gelfand, and he said, write so much about you that it's about me. You accomplished that with this documentary, actually. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what is some of the worst advice you've been given, and did you follow it? I think somebody once asked, said I should change my name. I did not follow it. <laughs> like, change my name in SAG, or like, professionally. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is some of the worst stuff? I don't listen to bad advice. Uh, and the worst advice probably comes from me. <laughs> from your own worst enemy. But oh, absolutely. We're all our own worst enemy, yeah. Let's be honest. It's like, oh, why did you, why did you buy two tubs of Nads, the Australian um, waxing uh, <laughs> cream, and then try to give yourself a bikini wax, which then looked like you punched yourself Ow. over and over again. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I, this Australian lady has a great accent. She says it's also edible, which is like, you're never going to eat this. Like, <laughs> so that's like, that was bad advice yeah. that I gave myself. You know, live and learn. Yeah, so you took it though. That's the thing. So you I did, did take, take your it. Own yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did take that advice. What is a guilty pleasure of yours? Oh, man. Um, I saw pleasure. I saw all of Fuller House. I don't know if it's pleasurable, but I guess because I've seen every episode of Fuller House, it's very bad. It's not good. <laughs> Excuse me, it's not good. It's not about judging. It's a safe. Yeah, I guess cheese. Ooh. My like my body doesn't want doesn't want it, but I want it. <laughs> I want it so bad. I want it now. <laughs> Do you have any? I'm looking for cheese in your town. dress. <laughs> I've got a sandwich in my bag. And, um, uh, no, um, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> I, my body also does not like cheese. Yeah. I still had cheese before I came here. I'm sorry. Um, I think I did too, to be honest. <laughs> um, growing up, who was one of your favorite fictional heroes or heroines? Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She's dope. Um, <laughs> villains. Growing up, growing up. I'm trying to think. Um, uh, you know, I, I read all of the <laughs> I read all of the Archie uh, Betty Veronica's growing up. My mom had a restaurant, so like my reward would be books, like Babysitters Club. So I like Claudia, cause she's Asian. <laughs> so simple, right? Um, and Sweet Valley High. If you could go back to tell yourself one thing, back and tell yourself at the beginning of the process of making this, and tell yourself ah. one thing, what would it be? That you'll be okay. It won't. It won't. It won't end like you thought it would, but you're better off of it. You're better off for it, and just accept that like you're battleborn. That's who you are. Like I wish, I wish people would feed me grapes. I mean, do you and have cheese. grapes? Yeah. Cheese. <laughs> really, what we're saying is it's lunchtime and we should wrap. <laughs> I just want a charcuterie plate, yeah. please. <laughs> but that's that's not who I, you know. You, like uh, my trajectory is not that my work ethic is not that and I like the work by the way I like getting my hands dirty so accept that accept that 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 and I have no problem saying I'm a I'm an mfing warrior and that's okay oh cool I'm a motherfucking warrior <laughs>
<laughs> and a happy Buddha. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, what do you have next? What's up next? Great, great question. Um, it's time to figure out what my next uh, development TV idea is. I need to write a film script. Um, and then I have an idea for um, a new podcast and maybe a docuseries. So it's time to, it's time to get my hands dirty again. Awesome. Thank you so much. Congrats on the film. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Such a pleasure. Yeah, you too.